One of my favorite things to do in Unity is playing around with particles. For some reason I just keep having fun with it. So in this mega video we'll go over the entire particle system from beginning to end. Here are some timestamps if there's any particular feature you want to hear about. This video is sponsored by Udemy. Udemy is a great site for learning new skills and they have a lot of cool courses on making games. Today I want to mention this awesome course on building Android games and apps using Unity. Throughout the course you will learn how to build a Legend of Zelda game from scratch, make 3D models using Blender and how to tailor everything to the Android platform. So if this course sounds interesting to you, or if you're just looking for an awesome place to discover new knowledge on game development, definitely check out Udemy. To get started, simply click the link in the description and get a discount. Now, the particle system consists of a bunch of different modules that each control different aspects of the system. You have to enable a module in order to access its settings. The first three modules and the very last module are almost always used. These are the particle system, the emission, the shape and the renderer module, which are all enabled by default. The rest of the modules contain more specific settings for different use cases. So let's take it from the top. The particle system module is by far the module with the most important settings. This module contains global properties that affect the entire system. Here you can control whether or not the system should loop, the duration of the system and if you want to have it play automatically. Some of the properties in the particle system module apply to the particles themselves as they are emitted. In other words, these are the start settings for your particles. This includes lifetime, which is how long a particle will last, speed, size, rotation and color. Now, all values that you adjust in the particle system can use something we call modifiers. These make it possible to randomize properties or control them over the duration of the system. The modifiers are going to be different for each property, but one that's really good to know is random between two constants. As the name suggests, this allows you to have Unity randomized between two values. Another one is curves, which gives you full control of a property over time. Now this module is also where you can add gravity to your particles. Also before moving on, make sure to choose a simulation space. Here we decide if we want the particles to follow around the object or move independently. The emission module handles the creation of particles. Here we have three different types of emission to choose from. Rate over time, rate over distance and bursts. The first one, rate over time, simply affects how much time passes between each particle emission. This is probably one of the most used properties of the entire particle system. The second one can be used to define how far the object needs to move before another particle is emitted. Especially useful for moving vehicles emitting smoke. Finally, you can set up bursts where you fire off a bunch of particles at once. I use this all the time for explosion-like effects. In the shape module, we choose the shape of the emitter. There is a variety of shapes you can choose from, such as sphere, hemisphere, cone and donut. Or you can of course choose your own mesh. This can allow for some pretty interesting results. The rest of the properties for this module control how the particles are emitted from the shape. Do they only emit from the surface or from the full volume? What direction should they shoot out and so on. The renderer module is extremely important. This is where you define the look of your particles. Using the render mode, we can choose if we want to show the particles on a 2D surface, which we call a billboard, or if you want to render them as a 3D mesh. After choosing a render mode, we have to assign a material. If you're creating 2D particles, there are a bunch of shaders to choose from under the particles shader category. Many of these use custom blending modes to give the particles a certain look. The main ones to know are additive, which make the particles seem very bright by only including the light parts of the texture, and multiply, which does the opposite. If you're making 3D particles, you can simply use the standard shader. Also, if you want the particles to cast or receive shadows, make sure to enable it here. Next we have what I like to call the over lifetime modules. As the name implies, we use these to change properties on the particles over time after they get emitted. Here we have some self-explanatory ones like size and color. As you can see, the color module gives us a gradient that we can use to smoothly transition from one color to another. The bottom part of the gradient defines color and the top defines alpha values. So you can easily use this to fade in and out particles. We also have a module called Velocity over Lifetime that allows you to control the speed of the particles over time. Here you can control the amount of force to apply on each axis, and the speed modifier is a multiplier that affects the speed in all directions. 
Limit velocity over lifetime is also interesting in that it does the exact opposite. Here we can limit the speed of the particles by adding drag. I often use this for explosion-like effects where the particles should gradually slow down. And just like the over lifetime modules, we have the by speed modules. These make changes to the particles based on their current speed. For example, in color by speed, we create a color gradient and rather than have a change over time, we match it to a certain speed range. Rotation and size by speed work in much the same way. The noise module is a new addition to the Unity Particle system, and it's absolutely amazing. It basically allows you to add turbulence to your particles. Fully understanding the different noise properties can get rather math heavy, but in general we can say that strength is how much you want the noise to influence the particles, frequency is how smooth you want the turbulence to be, the higher the value, the faster and more often the particles will change direction. Scroll speed allows you to change the noise that applies to the particles over time, which can make everything feel much more dynamic. And finally, the octaves define how many layers of noise we stack on top of each other. By adding multiple noise layers, we can create more interesting movement. At the bottom of the module, we choose what we want the noise to affect. Position, rotation, and size. The collision module enables your particles to collide with other game objects in your scene. You do this by setting the type to world. However, this can be pretty taxing on the computer, so instead you can use the default option planes. Here you define custom planes that only the particles will collide with. In most cases you probably also want to reduce the bounce factor to not make them jump around, as well as increase dampen to make them slow down on impact. I also recommend playing around with the collision quality to make everything as performant as possible. The sub emitters module is where things begin to get more complicated. Imagine inception but for particles. Here you can set up sub-emitters, meaning you can spawn new particle emitters from other particles. The new emitter can then be controlled as a separate particle system. An example of when this is useful is when creating impact effects or fireworks. If you want your particles to animate, you can use the texture sheet animation module. Here you can specify either a texture sheet where each image in your animation is laid out on a grid or a number of sprites. I use this all the time when creating 2D games, and especially for crafting more detailed special effects. The Lights module is a fast way to make the particles cast light onto their surroundings. This is great for effects like fire or lightning. Here you can simply create a light and drag it into the light slot. You can then control how big a portion of the particles should emit lights using the ratio. The other settings like use particle color and size effects range all determine whether or not you want the resulting light to be affected by the particle it's sitting on. If you check all of them, the look of the light will be a combination of the particle and the light, and if you don't check any of them, the light will just keep its values. Now the trails module can create a trail either from or between particles. The most important thing to remember here is that you need to create a trail material in order for it to render properly. The trail material is assigned in the renderer module. After this you can adjust width and color and even have it change over the length of the trail. With the triggers module, particles can actually trigger game logic when colliding with objects. The callback can happen when the particle enters, exits, is inside or is outside of the collider. By default you have the option to kill particles when triggering, but you can also create your own custom script for more advanced behaviors. If this is something you're interested in, I recommend checking out the example in the documentation. With the inherent velocity module, the emitter can transfer its current velocity to the particles it emits. This is useful if your particle system is moving around the scene and you want the particles to follow it to some extent. You can use the multiplier to choose the portion of the emitter speed that gets transferred to the particles. If you have a wind zone in your terrain, enable the external forces module to make it influence your particles. And finally we have the custom data module, which is pretty much reserved for advanced users. In short, this allows you to define custom data to be attached to your particles. You can then later use this data in a custom shader. So that is pretty much all the features I wanted to cover in this video. From here on it's up to you to have fun and experiment. And if you still have questions, I suggest you have a look at the documentation, it holds all the answers. Also don't forget to check out Udemy and the complete Unity and Android development course. Simply click the link in the description to get started. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.
Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in January, and a special thanks to Sean Carey, Diego Geik, Judeman, Diane Gein, Befio, Infinity PPR, Yorai Omer, Cyborg Mummy, Derek Keemskirk, Mur, Faisal Marify, Beard or Die, John Ramirez, Double Tap 45, James P, Superman the Great, John Burgard, Jason Latito, Alex Wakitsky, Bjorn Fugelknapp, Suni Jakobsen, James Rogers, Robert Bund, Rob Farron, and Erasmus.